welcome to another episode of Jim's Love and Garden. Okay, so I just wanted to go through the financial side of the uh, the allotment. Now I know a couple of weeks ago I did go through, just very quickly, just to give you an idea of um, what I'd spent and sort of what what sort of crops had come off the allotment and how much of that you know that was worth. But uh, what I've done is I've gone through in a little bit more detail and, and accounted for. Uh, I think I've accounted for everything, um, just so you can see sort of what I've spent and then what what crops have come off the allotment, so you can see how much sort of money the allotment saves me, if you like. So. Um, just to just to go through the expenditure, um, the allotment itself, the uh, the ground maintenance, is um, fifty five pound. Um, the uh, the allotment society over in Tamworth, I bought seeds and uh, compost and stuff from that. That was twenty five pound. Uh, from Wilco's, I bought some pots and some more seeds, which is twelve pound. Um, from Black Country Pins, I bought some of those steel poles, um, the fence pins, to uh, to support things down the garden. Um, those were thirty pound. Um, compost again from allotment society. Uh, the the Tamworth allotment society was twelve pound again, uh, which is like four bags of, of uh, the um, compost. Uh, I bought the um, Aloco and the Mashua from eBay for three pound fifty. Uh, Birdhouse gourd seeds were a pound. Um, I bought a pump to empty the, uh, the 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 sunken barrel down the bottom end when the allotment gets flooded. That was eighteen pounds. I bought some bloodfish and bone fertilizer, which is three pound fifty. Um, I bought some bolts and bits and bobs for the greenhouse, which is two pound ninety nine. I bought an aluminium hinge for this window behind me here that I put in, which was eight pound fifty four. Um, I bought some tomato feed um, from the garden centre, which is four pound. I also bought some from Tesco's, which is ten pound fifty. And I also bought some further seeds in October for next year, but I've included those as well. That was four pound ninety-five. So, in total, the uh, the total amount of expenditure for this year on the allotment was two hundred pounds and ninety-eight pence. So, basically, two hundred pounds is the total spend on the allotment this year, and that's included everything that that you know that's been used up here. I mean, you could argue there are. Um, Things like uh, the the pump I didn't really need to include, which was eighteen pound, and also the uh, the poles is a one-off buy, so you know. But uh, I haven't bought any tools or anything this year, so I just basically put those on. Um, I typically buy um, sort of um, a new fork or a new spade every couple of years because they just get worn out. But uh, I haven't bought any this year, so I just thought I'd add those on just to give you an idea um, of the running cost. So two hundred pound in total. So. Produce, which is basically all the crops that the uh, um, I've, I've grown on the allotment this year, um, and what I've and, and the way I've done this is is basically um, if I'd have bought the, the the produce off the allotment at um, the supermarket, uh, my price is up that way. So I've compared Tesco's, Ad, Asda, and Ocado, um, and then basically out of out of those three, I've taken an average price, and that's how much. You know, I would have expected to have paid in the shops for the for the produce. So for um, the kale, I've grown a whole mass of kale this year. Um, and if I'd have bought that in the shops, what we've had so far, and also what's still on the allotment, it comes to one hundred and thirty eight pounds. Um, broccoli was ten pound fifty. That's the that's the Calabrese, the green green broccoli. Um, that wasn't a good year this year, but basically, yeah, that's ten pound fifty's worth. Normally, um, last year that was three times that amount, but this year we didn't do as well on that for some reason. Um, flower and sprouts, uh, which is yet to be harvested, is thirty seven pound fifty two. Um, um, the cauliflower was the 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 cauliflower just basically failed, so I put zero down for those. Um, Swedes, um, sixteen pounds worth of Swedes we've produced. Uh, beetroot is nineteen pound twenty. Leeks are seven pound twenty-eight. 
Um, so that's 28 links on the. Um, well, that's how much it cost me in the shops. Onions um, did really badly this year. Uh, last year there was uh, there was almost 200 pounds worth of onions, and unfortunately this year, because of the blight, um, I had to take them out early, so they're quite small. So they've been valued this year at 80 pounds. Um, that's by weight. Um, potatoes have done pretty well this year. Um, at 78p a kilo and um, there's 480 kilos of potatoes that I've dug out of the ground so that's 374 pounds worth of potatoes um, the the ochre um, I've dug most of it up now but uh, I've put that down as 20 pound because I've got no way of pricing that up but I would imagine if I'd have bought that from a shop I'd just put a normal figure of 20 pounds down uh, the masher would again I, I can't buy that in the UK so I'll put a nominal price of 20 pound down um, and the just to give you an idea, the ochre we produce four and a half kilograms of um, ochre, um, and the the mashua um, there was fifty four tubers. So what that is in weight, I'm not quite sure. The um, aloco, uh, even though there are some that have formed, I've put that down to zero because basically there's nothing there to eat if you like. I've got some for seed for next year, but basically there's nothing worth eating. Um, the asparagus. We produce one one point four kilos, which is twenty seven pound eighty six p. Uh, the run of beans. This is a big one. Uh, the run of beans. We actually produced fifty four kilos of beans this year, uh, and in fact there was loads left on there. So I, I could have easily got that to seventy kilos of beans, but obviously I left a load on. We basically just hadn't got any room left in the freezer, so what I couldn't eat there and then just went to waste basically. So that's two hundred and ninety seven pounds worth of beans, run of beans. Uh, climbing beans we produced nine kilos. Again, I could have got at least another, uh, probably about another four or five kilos off the plants that I grew. But anyway, the nine kilos comes to um, forty-seven pound eighty-eight if I bought it in the shops. The parsnips, uh, most of which are still in the ground, um, there's fifty-three parsnips that have grown this year, which is sixty-nine pound sixty. Uh, sorry, sixty-nine pound ninety-six p. If I'd have bought them in the shops, uh, the turnips. Not done very well this year. Uh, really, there's only five worth um, harvesting. Really, so that's three pound thirty. The pumpkins. <coughs> now, by weight, we had six pumpkins, and the uh, the pumpkins were um, the pumpkins were four times four or five times size the ones in the shop from weight. So what I've done is I've valued the pumpkins at fifteen pounds each because the, you know the pumpkins were kind of this big. Um, so. I, that was the best way I, I, I thought of of pricing those up. So there's basically ninety pounds worth of pumpkins. Um, butternut squashes again because of the size of them. I mean you saw them in the greenhouse when they were um, when they were sort of drying out a bit, uh, ripening. Um, if you buy weight, they're about four or five times the size of the ones you buy in the shops. So uh, the butternut squashes um, I've put down to seven pounds sixteen p each because uh, that's how much they would be. It, by weight if you'd have bought them in the shop uh, and there was eight of those so that's £57.28p um, courgettes we had 14 of those so that comes out at £8.40 um, peas sorry spinach wasn't a good year for spinach so far but I've put that down we normally get a lot more than that so spinach is £4 a kilo we've actually had nine kilos out so far also I've got the spring next year so there will be more coming off the plants but uh, it's up to 36 pound peas were a complete failure we had no peas at all uh, cucumbers we ended up having 39 cucumbers out of this greenhouse uh, which and they're basically pounded so that's 39 pound tomatoes believe it or not this greenhouse produced 55 and a half kilos of tomatoes this year which is 222 pounds worth if you bought them in the shop the ginger i've put down to zero because we didn't have a good year with ginger uh, the chilies we ended up with 47 chilies, uh, which comes out as eight pound 46 if I'd have bought them in the shops. Um, the herbs I've I've been picking up the herbs all year long, and I've just put a nominal price down at 20 pound for that. Uh, I, you could easily justify more to be honest with you, but uh, I just pick the herbs that I need. And if you look at a sprig of herbs in the shops that are basically one pound, one pound fifty, um, I've done that at least 20 times this year. Um, the rhubarb is a massive one. Rhubarb is five pound a kilo to buy in the shops, um, and from the amount that we had this year on the, uh, or we harvested at least, um, there's two hundred pounds worth of rhubarb. Um, birdhouse gourds, another difficult one to price up, but I've actually found them 
um, on sale um, on the internet um, and once dried they work out in, including shipping because they basically you can only buy them from the states or around there um, they work out at £4.50 each so obviously because they, because we had 17 of them that comes to £76.50 the Aztec broccoli I'm not going to bother with that again but basically we had 3 kilos of that which ended up at £6 um, strawberries uh, we had 6.5 kilos of strawberries this year uh, for strawberries that's not good We've in, in years gone past we've had um, sort of 20 odd kilos of um, strawberries a year but uh, this year we only had six and a half kilos which comes to £64 if we bought it in the shop and finally uh, last but not least the raspberries um, at £12 a kilo we have five and a half kilos at least because um, I'll, I'll, I'll come up and eat them as I'm walking around as well so I didn't include those but that comes to £66 so the grand total is um, from a um, total produce is two thousand and sixty two pounds um, fifty four pence so uh, if you subtract the expenditure from the um, the produce which which would effectively give you the profit or the amount of money that you've saved um, it comes to one thousand eight hundred and sixty one pounds fifty six p money that I've saved by having an allotment so that just gives you an idea um, obviously, we've had a few comments on the um, on the um, on the channel um, of people saying that they always seem to lose money doing the allotment, um, and I'm not quite sure how you would because I easily make you know the, you, you know sort of well this year I've made one thousand eight hundred and sixty one pounds worth of profit if you like, um, but you know that would be money that I would have to spend to go out and buy the produce if I didn't grow it. Um, so. Um, I just obviously every year I go through this and just explain what um, what's been produced and what we've spent and stuff just to give people an idea. But I think I think the one mistake a lot of people make is they go out and they spend a lot of money. So their expenditure I always try to keep the expenditure as low as possible. Um, I do recycle a lot of things and I also I also look out for bargains, you know, with the seed and the compost. You know, just be just be intelligent by the way, um, you know, you're buying things, you know. Don't don't go out to a garden centre and spend a whole load of money on compost when you can buy it from an allotment society, for example. You know you can buy it cheap. So go on the internet, have a search round, um, or even if you, you know if you don't have access to the internet, go on. Um, you know, just look around the shops and price up, and uh, you will get uh, you, you know you will get some bargains. Also, the time of year that you buy things, you know this time of year, you know sort of in the autumn to sort of early spring. Um, or, or at least kind of this time of the year, you can get out and you can buy um, seeds and things like that from um, the shops from, 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 from this year, if you like, uh, which are now being sold off really cheap, which is what I normally do. Um, also, with your seeds, you know, if you only want to grow 20 of something, you know, by all means plant 30 or 40 seeds, and then the ones that you don't use, save them for the following year because the seeds will, a lot of seeds, you know, you can use for three or four years. So, uh, you know, only put in what you're going to use. Uh, you know, that's another way of, you know, making one packet of seeds last for a couple of years or three years even. Um, and, uh, you know, if you do need, um, you know, to buy anything, just, just be sensible in what you're buying. Because a lot of people that I know, you know, they start allotment off for the garden and they go out and spend a load of money on tools and, and, and all the rest of it. And, uh, you know, they end up, you know, spending an absolute fortune. Um, when really you don't need to, you know, the uh, one of the the three things that I enjoy about gardening is one the creativity side of it Secondly um, that I know that um, You know that I am saving a bit of money doing it And thirdly just the enjoyment of doing it and seeing everybody else doing it, you know the the, uh, the camaraderie that you have with your fellow a lot of uh, lot of holders and uh, You know and just the challenge of growing things, you know, so you, that's why I was trying to do something different, but um you know, so if you are finding you're struggling from a finance point of view with an allotment, um, just do what I do. Um, you know, just put down what you've had, what you've bought, and then just compare them. And, and, and I think you'd struggle to lose money with an allotment. And um, but that's 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 what's um, that's what's basically come about this year. It's not been a brilliant year for some crops. Um, the the strawberries haven't done well, which was because I've not moved them. That's my fault. The potatoes have done well, um, or reasonably well. I have had better years. The raspberries have done pretty well. Uh, the brassicas have done really well this year. The broccoli not too well. Um, 
but um, the uh, the kale and that that uh, Richard sent me has, uh, and has done really well. Pumpkins have done really well. Rhubarb um, uh, has always done always does well. Um, and the asparagus didn't do too badly this year as well. Um, you know, and I did try a few other things. Onions obviously didn't do well because we had the um, the blight in there. But all in all, I think 2016 has been a pretty good year in the allotment. We had a good long growing season. Um, you know, we had a warm spring. Uh, which enabled us to get things going quickly and I think we've had a long sort of growing season you know even now I mean this is December the 27th 6th um, and it's it's quite warm I'm here sat in a t-shirt enjoying the sun up the garden uh, you know and for December the 26th in the UK that's that's pretty good so we have had a really good season for growing stuff and um, let's hope 2017 is as good if not better Okay, it's this time of year when you really do need to start sort of putting your plans together for next year. And um, if you're like me and you've got sort of things already in the allotment, like I've got this greenhouse and I've got a lot of perennial plants around it, in other words, the plants that stay there and just keep growing every year, like the strawberries, the asparagus, the raspberries, the fruit trees um, and, and, and the comfrey, things like that have to stay pretty much in the same place. Um, but uh, all of the other crops, what you try to do is kind of rotate the crops around and uh, the things that you need to be concerned about, uh, or, or the reason for doing this, are uh, twofold really. One, it's to, to try and balance the nutrients in the ground. Uh, things, like, um, things like beans will put nitrogen back into the ground. Um, so on the roots there's like little nodules of, of nitrogen if you like. So bean plants, uh, like runner beans or climbing beans and stuff like that, actually feed the ground with nitrogen. Uh, and other plants kind of take it out. Um, so with things like potatoes, what you want to do is have lots of carbon in the ground and lots of nutrients, so you always dig in muck and stuff like that. And then the potatoes will then obviously use that up. Um, where other th things like beans, really, with beans, all you need to do is, is to keep the ground moist and they're happy they'll sort of grow and they actually feed the ground themselves. Um, the second reason for rotating crops around is disease control. Now, things like... Um, or pest control, other disease or pests. So things like with onions and that, you get like um, the allium, um, allium uh, minor. You know the 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 insects which which burrow into the uh, uh, into the onions and give you the sort of curly leaves and things like that. Now their um, their sort of grubs and stuff go into the ground. So what you don't want to do is grow onions in the same place twice if you've had that problem. Uh, because the the you know the grubs will be in the ground and they'll just attack next year's crop. That's one reason. The other thing is brassicas. Um, now brassicas do um, unfortunately have this fungal problem which is called club root um, and most gardeners know all about club root but what you want to do um, with, with, with rotating crops really is uh, you want to try and you want to try and not grow brassicas in the same position um, for um, you, you know sort of two years running. So what basically what you want to do is try and rotate them so that you only grow brassicas in a given position every three years. So, so one year it'll be brassicas, then the next year you'll grow, I don't know, something other than brassicas there. Um, then the third year you'll grow something other than brassicas there. And then the fourth year you can then go back to growing brassicas there. Um, if you're like me and you grow lots of something like potatoes uh, and onions and stuff like that, I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit limited to how I can rotate things around. So what I try to do is, I, I always change the brassica position, but I don't have the option of having three positions for the brassicas unfortunately. So I typically have two positions uh, because I have a big tunnel and all the brassicas get grown in that tunnel. So because of the size of the tunnel, I can only really put that in two positions on the allotment. Um, so I, I try and rotate it every two years, which isn't perfect, but it gives me, it gives me the ability to give the ground a rest for a year. And as long as I've, you know, I haven't got any club root problems in there, then obviously you know, you know, everything should be okay. The other reason is as well is potatoes only grow really, really well at this at this top half of the allotment because we have, uh, or can have, a reasonable amount of water logging down the bottom end, and potatoes don't like sitting in water. So what I always do is the bottom end that gets cloggy and gets you know gets quite a lot of water. I tend to grow the the water loving plants down there, like the runner beans, the climbing beans. The, uh, the butternut squashes, the pumpkins and things like that and the rhubarb. All that gets grown down the bottom end because that suits the ground. The ground's quite wet 
uh, it is fertile ground but it is quite wet it's not very good for potatoes uh, down that bottom down the, uh, the far bottom I've grown potatoes three times over the, the years that I've had the allotment and all three times I've had a complete failure where the potatoes have just basically not grown properly at all uh, and I've ended up digging them up and putting something else in uh, or I've had two years of poor crop uh, and that's because of the sheer amount of water that can get into the ground since that time I have improved the drainage and it is a bit better now than it was before but still I like to grow the potatoes at this end of the allotment because it's a guaranteed success potatoes is one crop you can grow in the same place year in year out and it doesn't have any problem at all also runner beans you can grow in the same place year in and year out it won't have a problem so the things that you need to rotate are things like alliums like onions garlic leeks and things like that and um, brassicas brassicas the big one brassicas like things like kale cabbage um, broccoli calabrese um, obviously sprout um, and, and, and all these sort of um, plants what you really do need to do is try and rotate them as much as possible as I explained I've only got two positions to put mine in so that's what I do I just rotate the uh, the tunnels up and down and then the tunnel at the bottom what I typically do is one year I'll grow brassicas in it the next year I'll grow something other than brassicas in there like spinach uh, you know one of the beet type um, plants like um, spinach or you know you can grow um, swede or turnip or, or whatever you want to do in there um, but um, so this year I've had brassicas in there next year I won't have brassicas in there and, and just try and do it like that uh, one word of warning if you have got tunnels like I've got don't um, don't rotivate inside the tunnel uh, because the carbon monoxide from the um, the rotivator will build up in there even though it's net and it does vent um, the carbon monoxide will build up in there and it is dangerous so what I suggest you do is dig the ground then rotivate it, get it all ready for your brassicas and then move your tunnel over onto that ground rather than move the tunnel and then dig it inside and so get the ground prepared then move the tunnel over, put it on peg it all down and then you're ready to plant out the tunnel that's the best and safest way of doing it uh, from experience um, so what I'm going to do now is just take up the allotment I'm sorry if the sound quality is not very good because it's a little bit windy today uh, but I'm just going to try and explain to position wise where things are going to go next year so you've got an idea of what I'm going to be doing in 2017 okay so just a bit of planning for next year obviously the um, hope you can hear me okay where the strawberries are at the moment I'm going to grow something else there um, and the strawberries are going to move from there to here so this first this first narrow section here the sort of a strip along here will be strawberries for next year um, and then from here uh, we're going to have potatoes going down in exactly the same way as we've had this year. So potatoes will come all the way down to probably somewhere about here. Um, so this will be the potato patch here. And then this tunnel is going to move um, down to somewhere about here. So along this bit here, probably hard up against the rhubarb. Um, so I'm going to move the brassicas from there to here. Uh, now, ideally what you want to do is only grow brassicas in uh, one position every three or four years. Uh, unfortunately, because, um, because of my allotment, the ground um, does get water logged and I, I don't have much success with growing potatoes in this, this area here. So, I always grow the potatoes um, kind of this end of the allotment. Sorry about the wind. Uh, I always grow potatoes in this part of the lot here. Now you can grow potatoes in the same place year in, year out, year in, year out. Uh, just like beans, you can grow those in the same place. So really, it's only the brassicas you need to rotate. Now, what I will be doing is as soon as this tunnel is um, finished and I've, I've eaten all the ground that's left in there, I'll be moving this whole tunnel down um, down to here, so over this piece of ground here. So early in, early next year, what I'll do is I'll dig a dig all this ground over, get it all nice and uh, weed free, rot um, rotivated and everything and then I'll move the tunnel from there to here So and then I'll, I'll grow the brassicas here next year. Um, this tunnel here will stay in the same place but I won't grow brassicas in it. Um, so this will stay exactly where it is but in here I'll be growing the spinach and uh, probably um, some of the gourds will be grown in there um, next year as well so I'll only grow brassicas in this section here next year um, the beans will probably go in the same place or possibly further down here um, and then uh, so this tunnel is going to stay exactly where it is um, obviously the root is going to stay where it is 
Uh, that tunnel's coming here, and then the potatoes will come down to just about the edge of this um, tunnel here, and then in this section here uh, will be the um, the onions, the um, the beetroot, and things like that. So that those crops will kind of all go, you know, sort of around here. So effectively, from a crop rotation point of view, it's not perfect by any means. But basically, next year, all I'm going to change is the strawberries are going to go swapped round, and then the um, the tunnel or, or the brassicas are going to swap places with things like the beetroot, the the leeks, the uh, the swede, and the and the parsnips. Basically, so that them two are going to swap over, and then this middle section here um, will be either potatoes or or, or some other crop. Um, I may well grow some pumpkins um, along here next year, uh, but the beans will be basically shifted down to behind from, from the end there up to about here. So the beans will basically shift down and then at the back there I'll probably grow the other type of beans. Um, now from the onions, the onions are either going to go somewhere here um, or the onions will go actually where the, um, the, the strawberries are now. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this yet. I've not... Um, Thought it, thought it completely through. Um, where the strawberries are now, I'm either going to put potatoes or onions. If I'm to put potatoes there, it'll it'll be so I can clean the ground up because there is a bit of bindweed in there. Um, or I'll put the onions there. The reason, the logic for putting the onions there is because of the blight we had this year. Um, because the onions are over there, out the way, they're less likely to pick up the um, the blight um, spores if they're if they're out of the way up there, out of the out of the wind rather than down here where they are in the wind. So uh, I'm not quite sure how to do it. What I'll do is I'll dig that ground over first and see how clean it is. If the ground is, you know, quite weedy and you know, it's got bindweed in it and stuff, I'll obviously get all that out as best I can. But if it is quite bad, I will then grow potatoes in there just to clear the ground up. Um, if the ground's not too bad, I'll grow the onions there and then just have the potatoes here. So uh, just in summary then, so going down the allotment, obviously all the perennial stuff will stay where it is. So the strawberries, the asparagus, the raspberries and the fruit trees stay where they are. The strawberries are moving to here, then I'm going to have potatoes down to about here. And then where the tunnel is now, I'm going to have the parsnips, the swedes, the, uh, the turnips, uh, the leeks and stuff like that. And also potentially onions. And then the tunnel is going to move to there. And then the tunnel down the bottom there will have things in it like gourds and spinach. Um, like it's had this year. So that's pretty much the plan for 2017. So thank you for watching Jim's Allotment Garden for all of 2016. I just want to say a massive um, thank you for all of the support, comments and questions that we've received over the over the past um, 12 months. It's um, It all makes it worthwhile. Um, you, you know, when I get feedback from people, you know, it's always nice to hear that. And um, I just want to say thank you to everybody for supporting the channel, all the subscribers. And um, I'll, obviously, of course, I'll see you again in 2017. But um, obviously, if there's anything, um, you know, in this episode that, um, that you want to comment on, please don't hesitate to put in the comments you've got below. And um, I'll see you in 2017.